And I find myself in times of trouble. Mother Mary comes to me. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Dun, dun, dun. And in my hours of darkness, she, Lucifer Mary, is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Dang, dang, dang. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Whisper words of Satan, let it be. And when the broken hearted people living in the world agree for a new world order, okay? Did you get it? There will be an answer, let it be. Which will be one word order. Uh, for though they may be parted. There is still a chance that they will see. Well, if you, they will see because they will get this, of course, every day. They will get this every day. Every day. And so they will see. There will be an answer, let it be. And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light. A light that shines on me. <laughs> Shines until tomorrow. Let it be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wake up to the sound of music. Mother Mary sings to me. <laughs> Madonna, Mary. You know. you know, Isis. Lucifer. <laughs> there will be no sorrow. Let it be. I'm telling you. Let it be. Here's the guy for uh, that made the song. Uh, Where is me? Here we go. Your beautiful host, Marcel Ming. <laughs> Let me show you <laughs> that I don't always wear the same shit. Here is some neutral black shit here. Info Info Mars here. Where is my finger? Should point here. Info Mars. I'm uh, the Alex. Alex Jones to whore. <laughs> so I don't know why, guys. YouTube, China Tube, sorry, accepted my 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 email, guys. I told them, "Hello, China Tube. I would like to know what hurt your feelings." <laughs> and they answered to me. They said, "We've reviewed the circumstances of your suspension, and and we have concluded it's appropriate to." To reinstate your account, thank you, thank you, big brother. <laughs> so, so big brother decided to have me on again and again here on YouTube. YouTube will still be able to hear Marcel Ming. Beautiful. So, there's two monsters that you see here, guys, with of course the Masonic handshake and the and the Masonic Albanian flag here, double-headed eagle. And these two demons, of course, are two serpents shaking hands because they are eating very well on your backs. And this is the prime killer of Albania, and this is a prime killer Draghi of Italy, of Shitali. Beautiful people taking care of us. This is just just the beginning of uh, taking care of us. So this is a simple task that you can do at home. This is iceberg. Think of this with iceberg. And after the iceberg melts, here is the level. It's the same. You dumb shiva. And so I made this image, you know, to make fun of these morons. You strike for climate change. What well, it should say? NPCs strike for <laughs> climate change. Okay, of course Jesus is coming, but ah, but I already show you this. Did I? Yes, I already show you this. So today I'm gonna talk about since I made uh, an Italian version of this movie that really I really liked. Yes, it was for the first time I saw Equilibrium, guys. 
I knew it's a very famous movie, but 2002 movie, but for the first time I I decided to see the movie. This is the movie. Uh, the people just like in the movie. Um, what's the name of that movie? The Giver. Take the daily dose to be morons. Well, I still don't get it, guys. People were already moron before 2020, guys. So I still don't understand why they pushed this shit here. Well, yeah, of course, the control will be much better that way, but they were already morons, guys. You can control sheeple with money. They are unable to do anything because they are disorganized. They don't have their lands anymore, so they, they totally depend on you. So I was, I was just uh, showing uh, this uh, video in, uh, <coughs> in Italian. Because um, this reminded me when I saw this Equilibrium movie, there is a piece here, guys, where the, the, these are just like Metropolis guys, old zombies. But at some point, this guy here, which was uh, working for the system, a killer, because there there were still some uh, humans left, and they would kill them. Of course, the humans are us, the anti-V. Of course. And so, but at some point he just breaks the dose while he was uh, washing himself and doesn't take, you know, the dose. And what happens, he, he, he starts to feel again. Starts to feel again and, uh, and it's slowly becoming a human. And starts to cry after hearing music, which was something was impossible for him to do before while he was taking the, the juice so at this point here guys the movie I have to go frame by frame like this because they are uh, otherwise bullshit they will take it out or whatever but I don't think maybe I can play some shit here I mean without sound anyway so they are they are killing this dogs guys because dogs is, is something uh, people are connected to dogs and everything you know and they don't want that in the new world order so they are killing so the bunch of dogs here but since he is he is starting to suffer every time they kill the dogs and one of these dogs just comes out and he will take the dog like this and uh, and he, he would save this dog, guys. And at some point, he, he takes a dog and tells them, you know, because people, the, the other zombies there are suspicious why this guy is behaving like this. And he tells them, oh, I will take this dog with me because he might have a virus and we need to, to check that. And at some point, guys, he he takes a dog and, and go, goes far away and uh, just to, to leave the dog uh, yeah, I mean he saved the dog and he thought okay I will just get rid of the dog to like let him free you know? but he couldn't do that because the dog would cry and since he could feel now he, he just couldn't go away because let, let, let me show you guys he, he would he would like you know go inside the car leave the, the dog outside but, uh, but just couldn't, just couldn't because the, 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 the dog would, would cry, this little dog, you know. He, he would tell the dog, go away. You see here, guys, it's in uh, in some Indonesian, Indonesian language or whatever, because there is a website that lets you download a movie a 360p low resolution, which for me is just fine, you know, because I have a slow connection. And so the dog would cry and he just couldn't go away with the car. And what it does is thinking now, what the hell should I do with the dog now? I can just leave it here because he has a heart now because he doesn't take the dose anymore. And he, he hides the dog behind his car, you know, back on the back of the car, you know, on the trunk, how do you see? He leaves it there with his coat so that he has something to wear to stay at the sniff you know. 
others that take the dose would see him and would want to kill him because he, he was being human, which is not allowed in the New World Order. And so, guys, this thing just reminded me of what happened in one of my walks, guys, with this dog here. So here is my last walk, guys. Well, of course, just a couple of people who already have seen this. But this is this dog, guys. It just uh, was attached to me. It's cold, as you can see. There's snow, and it's snowing even here, where I am right now. So it's going to be like uh, at least one week of uh, re really cold weather. Let's see. Look what I found, guys. This guy really loves me. <laughs> Amazing. It's cold. It's very cold right now, guys. So he wants to some attention. Look, it just comes around me and wants me to hug him. Here is the dude in question. He wants, he wants to play with me. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. These other two dogs were not so friendly. They're too afraid and when they hear a street talking. So I moved it here and hang it in the street. And, and so what happens, guys, for those that haven't seen this, I found an abandoned house here and I stay with a dog. But I, I this dog wanted, wanted like to stay just near to me just always near to me and it was hard because this abandoned house I was cleaning it because it was uh, junkies would enter there and uh, leave syringe, syringes how do you say syringes yeah and I was cleaning it this uh, this broom here I made it myself I found a stick and then small sticks and, and uh, tied them together so that I could clean that shit, you know. And since there there was no 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 um, no door to enter, the, the 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 dog would always cry once I entered the the house. And so I had always to take the dog inside with me. And then when it was time to sleep, guys, so I I gathered some wood there. As you can see, uh, I would take wood and leave it on the window, and then go inside and take it out take it inside and uh, here's the house guys abandoned of course and uh, and so when it was time to sleep guys I couldn't understand why why the dog would still cry you know every time I, I, I was going in my sleeping bag he would cry and I couldn't understand that so let me show you now here, here is inside now this is dark the eyes so of the phone is not good so at the beginning he started here's the dog guys he started to sleep uh, beside the fire but after a while he, he just couldn't stay there and just wanted me near and so i i understood what he wanted he wanted to stay close to me so i put it inside my sleeping bag and i slept with the dog guys and at that point the dog was just calm and just slept without any problems it was beautiful guys so it's just uh, this is what i said in italian in that other video guys and uh, i just wanted to uh, quickly uh, realize now that uh, the movie i i suggest to, to watch this movie it's good but uh it's very like 1984, The Matrix, uh, but the, the Demolition Man, The Giver, you know, in some ways. And now, guys, at some point in this movie, guys, there is this piece here. Because I said to myself, well, of course, why they would give us this good movie, you know, that talks a bit about the zombies that about zombies that take the juice every day, you know. But that there must be some catch here, you know. This is how they lived here. And the giver, the movie, the giver, it's something like this, guys. People see the world in black and white because they take the, the juice here. And so 
I said to myself, why they will give us this message that seems so so good. But here's the Venom, guys. I found, well, I could have found even more than this, but at some point, this guy here gets killed. Here's the, the shadow of the gun, which this one kills. This this is the protagonist, the, the main character of the movie, which changes after not taking the, the, the juice becomes human, but before he was a human, he was a piece of shit, and he killed his his uh, colleague at work, you know, which was this guy here, because he was a human, and he understood it, and at some point this guy is reading a book, and uh, I put on uh, Google, you know, what is this, yet? what the fuck is, you read this, and it, in the movie, they they, they uh, say this this uh, poetry poem, whatever, uh, of of this uh, Irish uh, writer, and so I go and uh, to find out more about this Irish writer, you know, and uh, here it is, guys, when he became fascinated by Irish uh, Irish legends and the occult. Here we go. I said myself, this guy was a piece of shit. He largely largely renounced the transcendental beliefs of his youth, you know, living God. Uh, he remained preoccupied with physical and spiritual masks, as well as with cyclical theories of life, you know, like uh, uh, reincarnation and all those new age bullshit, you know. And after I searched more, man, the shit that comes out. So first of all, this is a book they show in the movie, guys. There is some demon eating a human. Very nice. Well, this is what looks to me, guys. I see someone, this beast here, eating a human. Which is a good representation of, uh, of us. Here is a book that he wrote. Maybe someone else. No, no, yeah, it, it's him, yes. Here is with his body, Satan. Here is a, a movie, uh, a book of his, with all kinds of dragons and crosses and legs. Well, the clove here is like the, the Giglio, how do you say, the fleur de lis. is like the pentagram, you know. Well, of course, there's lots of meaning. And, and also, here it is with uh, an image I found of him with Alyssa Crowley and uh, Mada uh, Helena Blavatsky, which was Satan in a uh, feminine, or maybe it was a dude, who knows. So, I wanna, I wanna play just quickly, guys, what other people more intelligent than me say about this guy so let me go ahead and hear this shit by baron reichenbach called odic force he practiced passing crystals over his hands in the in the uh, and, and and looking at cases full of crystals in the irish national museum with a friend called charles johnston and they they came to believe in occult forces through a scientific mode now um the theosophical literature on these kinds of forces involved the possibility that one could invoke them and that one could invoke them through the study of invoking demons guys symbols so reading this book by Rama Prasad called Nature's Final Forces, uh, Yeats became interested in the practice of invoking forces um, uh, via the... Yeats is the, the Irish author. Me by, by meditation on certain fixed symbols. Now this was uh, a matter that was being explored in the esoteric section of the, of the Theosophical Society, but it also became one of those beliefs that was taken up in the Order of the Golden Dawn. So it is... So, you know, by putting that book in the movie, guys, they were promoting this bullshit, this esoteric bullshit. If you like, practical experiments in invoking higher forces, in clairvoyance, in meditation. And that goes, as, that goes right back to, to his 20th year. Friend, okay, I've got some background there on where it brought us along with Theosophy. And now we are, this is the last section, guys, it's, it's also important. 
That might bring us, Roy Foster, to the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, which he joined in 1890. Can you, uh, and he stayed there with various permutations for 30 years. What attracted him to it, and what, in essence, I'm afraid, was it? Well, the Golden Dawn was a magical order, and I think we should very early on, def- uh, well, if not define, um, isolate or separate magic from mysticism. Many of Yeats's friends were mystics. He, at this point in his life, went for magic. He wanted to control knowledge. He wanted to find out things. He wanted to learn by study how to evoke, and that's magic, that's not mysticism. The Golden Dawn were magicians, and they wanted to, through a series of rituals and magical properties and intensive study of um, sacred books, equip themselves to have magical powers, essentially. At the same time, it's rather more intellectual than that may make it sound. It's one of a number of movements that have links with Rosicrucianism and fringe, actually fringe Christian cults as well, but essentially are deeply inspired also by Egyptology and the craze for things Eastern in the very late 19th century. So what are they trying to control and what what are they doing with this magic? What are they getting at? What what results do they get from their magic? They want to control spiritual experience and they want to put themselves in the great, as as they see it, traditions of Neoplatonic wisdom. You know, guys, this is the knowledge that the people at, at the top of the pyramid, guys, give to these morons that they fall for it. They tell them that if, that if they find some, they will find some uh, answers that will uh, make them more powerful or whatever. In reality, the whole thing is just bullshit, guys. That people at the top have put there as knowledge, which is just to make these morons think that they will are getting somewhere, but they are getting nowhere, guys. All the study of the occult is uh, a way for people at the top to tell to these morons how to to obey them because you know when you say to someone oh, I have the knowledge and of course these people are, of course are, have some knowledge guys because they know for example in 2020 we realize that we are surrounded by NPCs guys but before 2020 I didn't knew people were so morons well the people that did that in 2020 guys they knew so of course they have more knowledge than us guys and people are fascinated and of course it's easier to go to the piece of shit that is more powerful than to go for example and expose their bullshit like Bill Cooper did for example because it will cost your life but if you go through this they will make you a a famous writer you will have your Wikipedia you will have your books and morons, morons expert will talk about you in, in their bullshit interviews here, like this one here. Where, by intensive study leading towards a revelation, you can understand the perfect forms of things above, which are only um, imperfectly represented or reflected in things below. That's the Platonic or Neoplatonic um, element in it. Um, they do so by methods of both group and individual study and, by bullshit. and in a sense the order appeals to people who are I think in many ways marginalised, who are ambitious who are like Yeats, autodidacts who haven't been to university but have often been to art college, who operate in inner CD suburbs of London in the late 19th century like Camden and Hammersmith, there is a slightly, obviously, ridiculous element to all this. They were accused of being mediocre and charlatan, some of them, weren't they? Well, there, there is an element. When you get in, like, Alistair Crowley as part of it. There is an element of charlatanry, and there's an element of manipulation, and Maud Gone, who, when she tangled with them for a bit, rejected them, rejected them partly because they were so irredeemably middle class, and you could see their dreadful clothes, as you said, under their robes, and their clothes certainly weren't from Paris, like Maud Gone's clothes. So it's... That brings it down to earth. (laughs) It's operating at a very particular couche social in late 19th and early 20th century. What is the relationship between this, between the spiritualism and sexuality to H. Brendan Maddox? Oh, it was very, well, it was very useful. It was a way of solving what was to be always a problem for him. But I think one of the things about the Golden Dawn is the fact that it was unisex. It was unlike the Masons, you know, it was just for one side, gender only. Uh, the uh, Golden Dawn was a marvellous kind of night out for adventurous middle-class women. It was a place to meet people, and you could meet, and they went through these rituals together, full of chains and daggers. And Anyway, it was, it was, it was a sexual excitement in it. What was the sexual excitement in it? There, was a, there were the rituals of entry. You had to be lashed to a cross, there were, and so on and so forth. Yes, I think, but all in a very genteel manner, but that's... Uh, it was in a gentle manner, I mean, all these people that are attracted to this shit, guys, are all or serpents or pieces of shit. It was at the Golden Dawn that he met the, the old woman, who, uh, the young woman, then who eventually but became his wife. Are you saying that, sex, that the relationship of, of Yates, to, the, 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 the conjoining unit of sex and spiritualism was a way, uh, his spiritualism was a way to meet women, or are you saying there's something more profound in it? Well, there's something more profound in it in the sense of something more basic in it, that for Yates always equated 
poetic potency with sexual potency. If he could do one, he could do the other. And he needed the symbols to, to produce his poems. And so if he, if he went through these rituals and felt sexually excited, it also inspired him. And it, I mean, the thing is, as you said, he's easy to make fun of, but the fact that these symbols worked for him and uh, they worked for us and he put them in, in, into poems. To me, the bottom line of, of, of Yeats and all his, his philosophy is he had a number of crises in his personal life, which always, which were really, as, as Roy says, therapy. He went to these sessions and he felt better afterwards. And he wasn't really terribly keen on consistency and order. I mean, he did all kinds of conflicting things. The Golden Dawn looked down very much on vulgar seances with trumpets and table wrapping, but he went into Soho and with the chambermaids and all this and got in contact with the other side. At the same time, he tried a more rational approach with the Society for Psychical Research, which is collecting evidence of life after death. It's, um, Daily Mail is still doing it, and the Society of... Uh, the SPR is still active on Marla's Road in, in, in Kensington. People, he thought he kept a skeptical eye on it. At the same time, he got the benefit of the, the stirrings of, of, of magic, and he met women as well. So, guys, they, they are attracted to sex, guys, because they are, they are animals, beasts, and they write books like this, guys. Uh, this is the author. They say this is a woman, but uh, it's. Uh, here is. They are just attracted to sex guys because they want the sheep of it read these books to just think about that guys because it's more it's a better slave when you are attached to to, 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 to this uh, chains of sex and uh, being an animal and having your desires met all the time and here's the book that this dude here wrote why women have better sex under socialism and other arguments of economic independence i mean i mean man has never been more enslaved than today guys and look at the bullshit they write guys economic independence and there's more by this shit guys because they are pieces of shit they don't like uh, truth they don't like reality they want to escape from reality and they buy books when someone tells them that we have independence, independent economics and women in uh, socialism, which is, which is what we have right now, guys. This is not capitalism or free market. There's nothing free today, guys. Your house is not yours even if you buy it. It's like we in communism. I had a house in communism, but the state gave it to you. And if they want that, they could take it away and move you to some place else without you having a voice about that. So today also people pay taxes on their, their, their houses, their own houses. Well, they are not owned by you, sheep. And if you go to see in, in her Wikipedia, you see something like, you know, there is this hundred million, you know, people that have died in communism, you know. And in that number, in, in that number, there's also Albania, guys, communist Albania, people that didn't like the uh, the regime, they will end up in gulags. And so she says here, ah, oh, this number, the hundred million, it's not, it's exaggerated by conservatives. The the hundred million estimate favored why the foundation is dubious. So because they, they put in, the, like, uh, in uh, Times Square uh, uh, a billboard which says 100 years with 100 million killed, communism kills. Well, in reality, what they don't tell you guys is that uh, we also are living in communism more and more, guys. So now, this, this bit will be in Italian, guys, so bye to English people. Let me quickly go if someone is still listening in Italian. Allora, Antonella Stasi, uh, tu mi hai fatto un po' incazzare, no? Ma non lo so, avevo intenzione di uh, essere un po' più duro, però poi ho detto, ciao Bert. E dove hai scritto questo commento qua, no? Ah, as eh, purtroppo non esistono punti fermi a cui aggrapparsi perché la vita è come un fiume che scorre in continuo mutamento. Non esistono punti fermi. Questo è il modo di pensare dell'elite che di 
dice non esiste il bene, non esiste il male, la vita è come un fiume che scorre di continuo mutamento e non puoi provare ad aggrapparti a, eh, alla roccia e opporti al flusso, quindi qui mi stai dicendo che io devo andare con il flusso, queste sono parole che a me non mi piacciono proprio, infatti ti ho risposto male. Uh, ciò significa che nel tempo in cui cre tu credevi ad Eliseo ti piaceva ascoltare i suoi racconti, le sue esperienze, le sue conoscenze, po poi accade quasi sempre per tutti, non solo per te, e che per crescere occorre fare altre esperienze, altre conoscenze. Il problema forse è la nostra cultura, non veniamo educati a capire che non esistono punti fermi, ecco, no, no, invece nella mia cultura esistono punti fermi, c'è il bene e c'è il male. Eliseo che mente è il male, lui ho fatto vedere nel video che fa vedere ogni anno Dio sta arrivando, Dio sta arrivando e Dio a lui gli parla, come mai quando Dio gli parlava non gli diceva che la terra era piatta, ma lui diceva no, nei primi video che la terra è una sfera, no? come mai tutto un tratto poi ha cambiato, Dio gli ha detto che è piatta, quindi lì si capisce che mente. Due, come mai Dio, che è Dio, lui è Dio, ha paura e mette la mascherina? Capisci che te, prende per il culo la gente lui? E anno dopo anno ti faccio vedere come dice, sono pochi minuti, sta per arrivare Dio, poche ore. Si contano, diceva sempre, i, i mesi si contano sulla dita di una mano, diceva. Capito? Lui mente. Questo suo mentire ci port porterà i cristiani, quei pochi cristiani che potrebbero in qualche modo fare qualcosa a non fare niente e vi porterà o a prendere il succo magico come tutti gli altri e infatti molti di voi l'avete preso oppure a finire in campo di concentramento, pecorelle, capite che è pericoloso quello che dice lui che verrà Dio a, 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 a fare le cose che devi fare tu è pericoloso lui ti porterà alla morte invece di usare la testa che Dio ti ha dato per difenderti da questi mostri lui ti sta dicendo di non fare niente addirittura anche di mettere la mascherina sapendo pure che insomma sei un cristiano dovresti soffrire un po' no? invece no voi non dovete non volete soffrire e infatti quando verrà per il momento vi forzano a mettere la mascherina e voi lo mettete ma fra poco vi forzeranno a prendere il succo magico e voi lo prenderete piuttosto di contrastarli capito dove ti porta questo clown non è interpretazione della Bibbia non stiamo parlando di chi ce l'ha più grosso intellettualmente qua qua si, 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 si parla di finire in campo di concentramento o oh no, pecorella, sveglia, e poi avrei voluto essere più duro con te, ma mi sono fermato, mi sono fermato, eh, però se continui poi entro un po' più in dettaglio, <ride> però comunque sia, qua mi dici di no, eh, che allora è vero, non esistono i rettigliani, ma scusa, ma loro sono dei cazzoni totali, ci hai fatto caso che quell'altro Leo Gullotta, come si chiama? Andreotta, il braccio sinistro. E dice, fa questi post, no? Con il video dove fa vedere che il sole diventa più piccolo. Ma uno che ti dice una cosa così, no? Perché lui dice, siamo terra piatta. E il sole diventa più piccolo quando se ne va il tramonto. Ma tu ce l'hai gli occhi, cazzo, per vedere che il sole non diventa piccolo. Ma come fai a non vomitarli quando fa quei post? Sono dei coglioni. Via da questi clown che vi porteranno a credere ai rettigliani e a tutte ste minchiate. Io non so che cazzo di forma c'ha la terra. E l'ho detto in un video, se volete sapere la forma della terra, vi dovete prima liberare da chi ci copre con menzogne una volta liberati da chi ci copre e non ci lascia esplorare questa terra e liberi allora capirai che cazzo di forma ha la terra ma adesso
adesso sei uno schiavo, sei. Non puoi sapere un cazzo. Ci sono tante stranezze qua che non possiamo essere certi. Io ho dubbi sullo spazio, per esempio. Mi sembra una stronzata. Quei pianeti che loro dicono li vede solo NASA. Tu con un telescopio non vedi quella roba. Quindi non credo nello spazio, non credo che sono andati sulla Luna e altre cose così. Però il sole, cazzo, non è che diventa più piccolo. Pure qui c'è qualcosa che non va. La cazzo di Luna è sferica. Sembra sferica, cazzo, quando lo vedi anche con un binocolo, sembra sferica. Cioè, sembra che c'ha i crateri. Qual è la risposta lì? You tell me. Ok. Ci aggiorniamo alla prossima. Ciao.